Two years ago, guys, I did a preview of Manor Lords. It wasn't a preview, like a hands-on preview like this is. Um, it was just based off a, a video that had been released showcasing what Manor Lords was going to be, and it was mightily impressive. But now, guys, um, as part of the next fest on Steam, um, there is a, a demo. This is a demo you can go and download yourself and, and play it if you want. I've been playing it for 11 hours. So I've done multiple restarts, uh, tested different things out, had a good damn damn look at it, guys. And I'm going to tell you what I thought. First up, there's a few graphical options that you can change. There's key rebinds, there's audio options and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I twiddled everything around to suit me, me graphic settings. And I limited the game to 60 frames a second um, because I don't trust very early access games because a lot of them haven't been optimized. And even limiting this to 60 frames a second was still taxing on the graphics card. I could hear the fans uh, cooling it down all the time. So it it is it does need optimizing a bit. Now the demo is limited. There's no, no combat on this demo. There's no armies or diplomacy or anything like that. But you do have the city building aspects of it and you can do trade. So there's plenty to get your teeth into. So you start off by naming yourself, naming your town or your village or whatever it is and picking your crest, your colours, if you like. And then there's a procedurally generated kind of piece of land given to you. That piece of land is on a, it's just a small section of a bigger map. Um, but it's not that big, to be fair. It's not that big. I was quite uh, disappointed and shocked at the small piece of land that you actually get. The game itself plays like most city builders. You plant crops, you harvest them, you thresh the wheat, you turn it into flour, you make bread with that, you cut down trees, you mine your ores, you build your logging cabins and all of that kind of stuff and houses and all the rest of it. Anybody who's played a city builder kind of knows the dance. Now this is a bit different and I'm not sure if I like it yet. There's the jury still out on that. Um, the way this works is when you build a house, a family moves in. Now the family are the workers. So if you have, say, I don't know, a, a lumber mill where you are chopping down trees and using the wood to, to make things, you will assign workers to that. Without workers, it just simply won't work. So you assign one set of workers and that will be one family. An actual family from a house will go over and they will do all the lumbering. If you assign another worker, two families, and well, another family will go over, meaning two families are doing all the work at the lumber mill. So... If you only have five houses, you can only assign five workers. So that means only five of your buildings will actually have workers in them. So you need to make a lot of buildings unless you want to constantly keep having to take workers out of one building and send them to another, which is what I had to do. And for the first few playthroughs, I was experimenting with sort of trying to tell them to chop trees down in a certain place. And I found a lot of it quite broken. I found that if you dabble with it all and you say chop them trees down over there or plant trees over here, a lot of the times I'll say, hey, go f yourself and just walk away and procrastinate in a corner somewhere. Uh, there was one ridiculous, I, I just totally ran out of lumber in one place and I had three people assigned to the lumber mill and I had them told to go and chop down trees in a certain area and they just wouldn't do it. So it was a bit buggy, it, but, but it's early. I found the best thing to do is to just ignore them, don't give them any orders, just put them in as workers and then forget about them. And that way they'll chop everything down. So yeah, don't dabble is my advice at the moment. So you get your lumber coming in, you get your houses going up, you build a well, you build a marketplace, all the usual stuff. And then you build um, a farm and the farms are hilarious. You can, I made two tiny little fields and I had enough f***ing bread to last a lifetime, an absolute lifetime. I mean, I could have supplied every Greg shop in the UK just off, off, off one season's wind. It was crazy. I had hundreds and hundreds of loaves surplus that I was selling off. Um, another crazy thing that happened was uh, I built a church in one of my playthroughs and the, about, I don't know, a month after, because it's all seasonal, a month after building a church, I get a, a message from the king saying he wants some taxes off us for the land I'm on. And I'm like, hang on a minute, I got way further than this in my first playthrough and, and he never said shit. So if you build a church, apparently that's when you start getting taxed. So on my latest playthrough, I didn't build a church. I'm not paying him. Fuck the king. Yeah, exactly. So it works quite weird at the minute, but it's such an early access demo. Uh, I'm not too fussed about it. Uh, the main thing is it looks absolutely gorgeous. It really does. And I, went, I can just imagine this 
sort of when all the armies come into it, uh, when you get all the trade going, when you're making lots more stuff and you've got a really massive uh, colony going on, maybe it's city size because you upgraded um, to, to different sizes. You have to meet certain requirements to get there. Um, at the marketplace, so you have to have different types of food going on. You have to do a lot of trading to maybe get there to get some money. You have to make a, a manor. You can also even walk through the place as the Lord of the Manor, which is quite fun. Obviously, it, it's a bit shit at the minute. I mean, you see people carrying nothing, the holding like invisible sacks, and the pathing of everybody's just atrocious. The bumming into you, walking through walls. It it just looks a bit shite. In fact, the graphics look shite when you get in close. It's way better to just keep your distance with your camera and it looks absolutely gorgeous and beautiful if you do that. You get in close, it looks garbage. But thankfully, this kind of game, you're never going to want to get in close. So what's the even point of having that? It's just a gimmick, I think. The farming's good. Um, you can do crop rotation and you've got to watch the, the fertility of the land. You can put um, let it fallow for a season and then put different crops in the, the year after that uh, to, to keep the, the nutrients going, which I like. There's a few games bringing that in now. It never used to be in the olden type of these games, but now this is starting to be a thing and I do like that. Uh, so you can set that up to three years in advance, which is handy. And if you have multiple f uh, fields growing different crops, that's fantastic because you, you don't have to really worry about it. You just set your fields so you've always got something on the go and uh, you should be fine. You've got your windmills, you've got your bakers, like I mentioned earlier on. You've got tanneries for leather, you make clothes and uh, sell them at the market store to equip all your people with it as well. And then there's trade deals, which you can't do in this. You can sell to traders, but when you look at the bigger map, you can uh, do sort of diplomacy with other, other factions, which again will be nice. Or just take over the bastards with an army, which is even nicer. So this game has massive, massive potential. I wouldn't say I'm overly impressed at the minute. I am with the visuals from a distance. It looks, it looks great. Um, as in playing the game. Yeah, it's good. It's not sort of the best city builder I've ever played, but, um, it is. It is good and it has potential and it could end up being one of the best city builders ever. But let's not get carried away at the minute. There's nothing I've seen in the gameplay that makes me think, oh, this is amazing. But hey, when they bring the armies in and the, and the strategies, I think it's all going to change for the better.